afraid, they were disheartened, and they were defeated. That's how they were described, and we can understand that. That's who they were. And then they weren't. It changed. Something happened to change these, this group of followers. And what it was was the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Two parts to it. There was the empty tomb, of course, and the appearances of Jesus. And those two things combined were compelling and overwhelming for these believers. And they, they came to realize it was true. This is who he is. One without the other wouldn't have worked. What if they just had, had the empty tomb, no appearances? Well, any skeptic would have said, fine, fine, they just came and stole the body, right? I mean, it would, it would, they would have dismissed it that simply. What if they just they had the appearances but no empty tomb? They would have gone back to that Beast Boys thing. They're just they're imagining it, they're hallucinating, they're just making it up. And by the way, they would have produced the corpse if they could. But they had the empty tomb and many saw it. And then Jesus did appear to many. Paul records it for us in 1 Corinthians 15. Hear this, folks. What he writes for us was written 20 years after the resurrection. Not 50, not 100, 20 years after the resurrection. And what Paul writes for us in 1 Corinthians 15 is this, I give you what has been given to me. In other words, this is the story I know to be true, that Jesus Christ was crucified and was raised on the third day. And he has appeared first to Peter and then to the twelve and then to more than 500 witnesses, most of whom are still alive. That's what he wrote in this public letter that was to be circulated in the church. He wouldn't have written that, would he? Unless it were true. I mean, they're going to check this out. They're going to go back and see if there are witnesses. And there, and there were. And by the way, can I mention one other thing? One other reason why you might want to believe this story if they were making up a story, and I want to say this kindly, but I'm putting it in the context of history. If you were making up a story back then, you wouldn't have had women be the witnesses. And yet all four Gospels record it that way. In that day, women were not viewed as reliable, credible witnesses. They weren't even allowed to testify in a court of law. So if you're making up a story, you wouldn't say, and the women saw it and went off and told others. That's not how you do it. And yet, that's the way it's recorded. I wonder why. I think it's because that's exactly how it happened. And many came to realize that this Jesus was the Messiah, the one sent from God. And all of them, all of a sudden, this church was birthed. And they were followers, not of Caspar the ghost, but of a risen, victorious King, Jesus Christ. Doesn't that make sense, folks? And here's the twist to the story. Here's the thing that they didn't see coming. They came to realize that in Jesus, and, and because of Easter, this new age had begun. It wasn't just his resurrection, but it was theirs as well. This new era had dawned where God would not tolerate injustice and poverty. God would work for peace. Jesus began that movement and he handed it off to his disciples. What they came to realize is that before Easter, they were the dead people. They were dead in their sins. They were separated from God. And they didn't see that coming. But they realized that because of Easter, it wasn't just his resurrection, but it was theirs. And for centuries now, believers have realized that in the resurrection, Easter morning, God's promises were revealed and remembered. He would forgive sins. He would restore all of humanity. He would heal suffering. And believers to this day have been raised up to this new life, hearts united, hope restored, because of the resurrected glorious King Jesus Christ. Dear friends, Easter changes everything. It really does. And that's why 127 people gathered at the America Inn last uh, Sunday, last Palm Sunday afternoon. You know this little motel down on, on 50 and 35? And they gathered at the swimming pool for a nice pool party? Nah, sort of. They gathered there because uh, 33 of our people were going to be baptized. From six months of age up to 75 years of age. And there's some pictures up on the screen. You know, they gathered around the pool and they had a time of worship and they were singing and praising God and there was great joy in the place as one by one these people came forward and they were baptized. Because we teach and what we believe is that in our baptism we are tied to the death and then the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes? In the waters of baptism, that old sinful self, that which separates us from God is drowned out and we rise up 
to this newness of life. Sin forgiven. His righteousness imputed, that means given to us. Oh, man, there was a party over there last Sunday. Why not? Maybe some of you would like to be baptized like that. We'd love to celebrate that with you. Let us know. It was Easter on Tuesday afternoon in that prayer chapel. Tuesday of this last week, a couple came in to see one of our pastors. They wound up talking to Pastor Tim. And the woman has been coming to Hosanna for about three or four years and been in Bible studies and in worship, hanging out with women of faith, and God's kind of stirring things up in her. It's making a difference in her life, and she likes it. Her husband, on the other hand, has just kind of been on the edge of things, looking in. And there's been some stress in the relationship. Came and talked with Tim, and Tim started talking about, you know, what Jesus can do, what it can mean to have Jesus in your heart and in a relationship, and what reconciliation can be like. And finally, Tim got around to saying, would you ever consider inviting Jesus into your life and into your heart? And, and the man said, well, what'll happen? What'll happen? It's a fair question. And before Tim could answer, the wife stepped in and said, I'll tell you what'll happen. It's like you've been living in life in black and white, and all of a sudden it's technicolor. And every single day, it's like you're filled with hope and, and you're happy, and life becomes an adventure with faith in your life. That's what'll happen. And he said, okay, I'm in. And he prayed to receive Jesus Christ into his heart. And I can tell you that to this day, to this day, there's a new harmony and a new hope in that relationship. Maybe you want to pray that prayer in the prayer chapel today before you leave. And I would say on a, finally on a personal note, that we remembered Easter uh, when my dad died two months ago. Uh, dad was 88 years old, lived downtown in, uh, at the Augustana Care Center, was very happy there. Uh, suffered from dementia. He didn't know what day it was or, you know, if he'd had lunch or not. But oftentimes I'd go down and see him on a Sunday. I'd, I'd worship here sometimes at 9 o'clock when I wasn't preaching. Then I'd scoot downtown to worship with him at 1030 down there. And I'd sit next to him and... Um, invariably the preacher would be preaching and my dad would lean over to me and say I can't hear a word the guy's saying and I said dad just, just it's okay dad I'll tell you later what he was saying and then a few minutes later my dad would lean back and he'd, he'd point to a woman across the aisle and he would say to me you know she's one of the ones who's half crazy you know that don't you I said dad just shush, shush. but then not always but not unlike we did just a few minutes ago, we would sing one of the great old hymns of the church, like Amazing Grace. And this man who didn't know what day it was or whether or not he'd had lunch would sing without anything in his hand all four verses of Amazing Grace, baritone voice, harmonize, because those words were written on his heart. And I couldn't sing a word. But I know this as I stand before you on Easter morning, that I'm going to see my dad again. I know that. And I know that because of God's grace, which abounds. And because of God's gift, which is his son, risen and victorious on Easter Sunday morning. And because of the promise that goes with that, that whoever believes in him shall never perish, but shall have everlasting life. <laughs> Are you with me, folks? Do you, are you feeling it this morning? I mean, does Easter change everything or not? It just does. And, you know, before Easter, before Easter, it can be darkness and doubt and death can have a hold of us. Faith in Jesus Christ, resurrected Lord, after Easter, there's newness of life, there's hope, and there's life with an eternal dimension. You are good listeners this morning, but I would just say to you, don't just take my word for it. Take the word of these witnesses, friends, who have experienced the power and the presence of the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ in their lives. Watch with me, please.
So you know we're celebrating Easter next Sunday too. We do it every single Sunday. And you might want to come back because I'm going to talk about is the Bible the real thing? Is it God's word? But this morning, the Easter news is he is risen indeed. Victorious king. His grace abounds. And take this Easter good news in your heart. Nothing in all of life can ever separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Believe it and live it. God bless you. Thanks for spending Easter at Hosanna. Have a great week. Oh, yeah.